Hello and welcome to our podcast on Joy of Teaching International Student. I am Dr. Nazreen Sultana, a teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College, and I am the host of this podcast. In this podcast, we share our teaching journey and wisdom about teaching international students in the college classrooms. Today, my guest is Carrie Melville, a full-time faculty at the School of Interdisciplinary Studies at the college. And Carrie will share her joy and learning from teaching international students. But before that, I will let Carrie introduce herself. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nazreem. As you mentioned, my name is Carrie Melville. I am full-time fac- faculty and program coordinator for the General Arts and Science program within the School of Interdisciplinary Studies. I have been working uh, at Conestoga for, well, this month, 18 years. Wow. And not always in faculty position, but always working with uh, individuals from um, a variety of different places around the globe. So it's a real privilege to be here to uh, chat with you. Thank you, Carrie. And uh, because you said you have been working for 18 years, but may I know how long have you been teaching? Yeah, so I started teaching uh, for the school in 2018 and started uh, coordination um, four years ago. Super. So, Kelly, do you remember the first time that you taught international students at the college? And how was the experience? Do you remember any story, any surprise? Something maybe you want like to share with us? Absolutely. So I will take you back even before I started at the college. Okay. Um, my undergraduate degree is in English and communications. Mm-hmm. And the moment that I graduated, I was on a plane to teach English overseas. So I taught English in Japan and Korea. Mm-hmm. And it really was my first experience. Um myself being in immersed in a different culture and also teaching a classroom of uh, individuals that um, were looking at me to uh, guide and support them in their in their learning experience. So um, that was my first uh, experience where I have where I learned that I absolutely absolutely loved the experience of of teaching uh, internationally or diverse groups of people. Okay. So when, uh, and thank you for sharing that. So when uh, first time you started teaching at the college, so was that experience different than your overseas experience? Something which was, you think, oh, it was surprising to me. Oh, absolutely. Um, When, so when I joined the School of Interdisciplinary Studies, I was teaching career development. Okay. So my background is um, I have, you know, my undergraduate degree and I have a certificate of postgraduate certificate of career development and a master's degree in uh, educational research with a specialization in uh, workplace and adult learning. So in the classroom, I was uh, teaching CDEV courses, if you're familiar with, with those. And... What I realized teaching career development courses to um, diverse populations is that this subject matter really is coming from a Western-centric approach. And sometimes it doesn't always connect with our students. So first A few classes, I would, you know, try my old lesson plans and they wouldn't fly. They wouldn't work as well as what I I was accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And then I really had to think about, okay, what what what's happening here and realize that I need to engage the students, not only in the lesson, Mm -hmm. um, but also in the experience of the content. Okay. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, asking the students to explain what their experience is of whatever the subject matter may be, what what their paradigms are, what their thoughts are. Yes. Um, so that they can engage in the process as well. 
once I kind of flipped that approach, um, instead of me being up there as expert of all, but as uh, a participant as well in the learning process, I found that engagement Mm -hmm. went up. The learning experience increased for everyone and that students Students really appreciated that. They were part of the experience and not just receivers of the information. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, When you were talking about this uh, kind of tapping on previous experience, trust me, those uh, uh, words gave me goosebumps because the reason is that often we go to the classroom with the idea that, okay, I'm going to give all the knowledge. And people sitting in front of me, they had nothing to offer. But then when you value that offer that everyone comes to the class with some kind of background knowledge. And that kind of makes a beautiful classroom environment that where in the lots of sharing, it's two-way traffic. I will go back to one of the things you have mentioned about Western-centric, um, you said uh, the curriculum or Western-centric approach. Yes, yeah. So would you like to clarify about that a little bit of that? What exactly did you mean about that? Sure. And how did it, that is difficult for international students? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I think when, um, for me, because my, my subject area, if I'm teaching career development or interpersonal and group dynamics, it isn't uh, a formula that I'm asking students to think critically about their experience Mm -hmm. of life Mm -hmm. uh, or their experience in the world. So I, as someone who has grown up in Southwestern Ontario, come with my own Mm. ideas, ideologies, and paradigms, and my students come with their own as well. They may be different, but one isn't better than than the other. And if I was presenting the idea of, you know, career development from only my approach as someone who has experienced and learned Mm -hmm. in... um, you know, Southwestern Ontario and Mm -hmm. Western um, uh, post-secondary institutions, I would be imposing um, these ideas Mm -hmm. instead of sharing and collaborating with my students. And especially when we're talking about career development and career or educational decision-making, it's so critical for students to think about their own experience and how they make decisions and how they process information. Um, And it may be different from the way I do. And it may be different from the theories Mm -hmm. that we approach. So I'm not saying that um, we um, not present information but we bridge that material with the information that the students may have and the information that um, they're, they're um, processing. Thank you so much, Carrie, and this is brilliant. Um, I, was, I, I wonder that uh, you have spoken about uh, ideas related to critical thinking, uh, some of those hiccups and challenges. Um, do you remember any specific challenges that you had while teaching? international students, or maybe still have, or maybe you are already facing that, something you'd like to share with us? I I have had um, classes where I have presented mm-hmm. um, workshops or um, a lesson that, that was about sharing mm-hmm. and expressing yourself. And I would go there very excited and uh, thinking that this would work. Um, only to find that um, students felt shy. They didn't want to express themselves in an open, in an open way that maybe I had been accustomed to previously in my classrooms. Mm-hmm. And it dawned on me that this wasn't this this wasn't that they the students didn't want to participate. It was um, something that pushed them outside of their comfort zone. Okay. So. Getting creative in my strategies, um, using um, assessments or or even activities in the classroom, like one minute papers or even breakout rooms where they can students can express just to me instead of in front of everyone Mm -hmm. um, seem to work really well in in engagement and expressing thought. 
So it just meant that I had to be creative in my approach Mm -hmm. and also have that space where students felt safe to approach me and talk to me and, and the class. Thank you so much for mentioning that, that how it is important for the students to feel safe when they are in the classroom and kind of create the space for them also as a classroom teacher. You mentioned something about being creative. So, and you also kind of shared a couple of ideas. So would you like, would you mind uh, to share your most creative idea that you have used so far in the classroom? Something you found, oh, that was the most creative one. Well, I think what one of the most creative uh, things that I have done in my career development classroom um, is when I'm teaching on Zoom, as you know, we are still teaching Mm -hmm. uh, remotely in many sections. I ask students to show me visually on their screen when they first arrive a representation of what career they're thinking of. So on their their picture, it could be themselves with something or it could be something that they've Googled and they're they're putting up. Um, And maybe it's someone's interested in baking or an engineering career and they show me a picture of that. And what I love to see is how over the semester those ideas may change or flip or evolve. And sometimes they stay the same, meaning okay. the students solidify their plan. Okay. And what's really cool about this is as they get more comfortable with this picture or representation mm-hmm. that they're putting up, they get more comfortable talking about it. They want to share their ideas. So I've looked for ways how I can incorporate this into some of my other uh, class uh, classes that I teach as well. And uh, it's interesting because, um, you know, it, uh, it doesn't always translate to other, other areas. But I think that's one of the most creative ways is, um, is bringing something that's meaningful to the student into the classroom. That's a cool idea. In fact, you know, that's a very cool idea. I have seen I have seen someone else doing not the same thing, but the one time I met him and he had a picture of Putin on his background. And I said, why does a picture of Putin? And he said, I'm teaching first term international students. And this is my week one class. And everyone asked me, what's the picture about? So I had a chance to talk about Putin. And <laughs> uh, and he was excited about that. And oh, he wow. said... Every week he plans to have different pictures. It could be food, could be a place. So your example reminds me of that cool idea yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a place to start a conversation. Yeah, I think um, having the social dynamic in the classroom, right? Yeah. So Carrie, you probably work with many new full-time faculty. Oh, sorry, part-time faculty and of course full-time faculty as well. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to ask you, what would be your one tip to the new folks who probably are very new to teaching and even teaching to international students? My first tip is patience. Okay. Uh, Patience goes a long way. Our international students are new to Canada Mm -hmm. and they're new to not only uh, a country, but new to a system, a big system. And it's really important Mm. to be patient uh, and understanding, whether that's in the classroom or, um, you know, as a program coordinator, navigating the the institution. Mm. Um, Patience and kindness goes a very, very long way. Mm -hmm. The other tip is to know your subject matter and be creative in how you're, you're building your lesson plans. I have, when I'm building a lesson plan, I always have ideas and backup plans. Maybe they're not fully developed, but in case something doesn't go over as I envisioned, I always want to have that plan B. I also encourage new faculty to not take things so personally. It's okay to flop at something. Yes. It's okay to reflect and think that didn't go as what I, how I thought it would go. 
And it's okay to ask your students, Mm. what do you need? What would make this learning experience better for you? And I think that sort of dialogue between Mm. student and educator breaks down the authority and allows for a more inclusive experience. And that's what's really important. And that's where real learning uh, begins. Thank you, Carrie. I wish that somebody had told me the same words of wisdom when I was a new faculty many me years too. back. Me too. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, I think uh, it's kind of even the last thing you have said, not to take things personally, is so beautiful. And that creates avenues for conversations and dialogues. And something you have said, which is which is so beautiful, you have said that, what do you need? Asking students. I think that is also very, very wise uh, to do that. Um, we learned, both you and I learned in a hard way, but people who are listening to us, probably <laughs> they will have more opportunities uh, to learn from your wise words. I'm going to wrap up these sessions with a question. Sure. So... Uh, we, you already have expressed so much of uh, kind words about teaching international students. But then as a wrap-up dialogue, do you have any experience that which really made you feel, oh, teaching these people is really rewarding. And uh, this is what I live for. I, I would like to continue doing that. Well, I will say that working with diverse populations in my career has been one of my greatest privileges throughout my career. Um, and I, there's one, there's one story of, of a student that I was, that I was working with who had a goal of, you know, graduating and, um, getting a job and being, you know, part of the community. Now this story has, a a, a, f- a kind of a funny twist to it. Um, One evening in my home, we had a water line break and we had to call uh, a company to, you know, come in and fix this emergency situation as my ceiling was coming down. Okay. And uh, the doorbell rang. It was the middle of the night and I opened up the door and there was my old student. Okay. And um, the joy... Mm-hmm. Seeing this individual um, graduated and working and doing well, and his joy seeing me on the other side in the middle of the night with my family as well. My family was a little bit confused because we were so happy to see each other. <laughs> um, you know that that is one of the the greatest joys is when I see that Carrie, I I did it. I achieved my goals. Um, no matter my student, that is my greatest joy in teaching, um, but particularly for our international students, because there's so many um, additional, uh, I don't want to call them challenges, but additional road bumps to navigate mm. that makes it um, even that much more rewarding and satisfying when our students land on their, uh, you know, in their, their goals. Um, just even talking about that, it, mm-hmm. I have goosebumps. Uh, remembering I have tears that. in my eyes. Uh. <laughs> I, I'm such a crybaby when people <laughs> talk about international students and these rewards because um, I, it always taps on my own experience as sure. a student. So thank you so much, Carrie. And thank you for sharing uh, your teaching journey with us today. I hope you continue sharing your joys about teaching international students with everyone around you. And thank you so much for making time for this uh, podcast today. I hope you enjoyed your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. 